why hello. <laughs> So since we're in quarantine, I noticed that I have footage from over six months ago and instead of uploading that onto my second channel where I post more personal vlogs, I wanted to do something a little bit different by putting that footage onto this main channel. And by doing so, I wanted to add some little drawings of animals that I saw. So when we went to the zoo lights in December of 2019, not only did we see ducks, bears, and giraffes, but we also saw some other animals including alligators, penguins, zebras, lions, and so much more. As you can see here, the zoo was teeming with precious animated lights shaped as penguins, which I eventually decided to draw here. And of course, I wanted to maintain the festive theme, so I started to draw little red Christmas hats right above the penguins that were previously sketched. And if you've seen my previous drawing videos where I've used color pencils as my main medium of choice, you may have also noticed that I used some of the same techniques during these time lapses. One technique that I like to use includes making sure that my pencils remain sharp for increased precision. And I also like to use at least three colored pencils in each section that I am coloring. Not only does layering make your art piece look cool, but it also adds more dimension and depth, which is extra brownie points if you ask me. Now you might be wondering, how do you pick these colors? Sometimes it's good to use a color wheel as a good reference just to see which colors are complementary, supplementary, primary, secondary, etc. But for me personally, I just match similar colors together based on cool and warm tones. As you can see here, as I'm coloring these penguins, I'm using a lot of cool tones which include blue, violet, and green. And of course, black is essential for contrasting shadows and white is appropriate when accenting highlights. Another technique that I found extremely helpful in differentiating between the shadows and highlights is to incorporate varying degrees of pressure while drawing. It also becomes beneficial when visualizing where your light source is coming from to maintain consistency throughout your artwork. In this illustration, not only will all the techniques mentioned be used, but I decided to incorporate my own personal twist. As you can see here, not only did I draw two penguins, but one of them happens to be a kitten dressed up as a penguin. And since I thought this was an adorable touch, I decided to incorporate many tiny kittens dressed up as zoo animals later throughout this video. And since there was a lot of negative space on the very bottom of the page, I decided to fill it up with another penguin. Now look at him, he's just trying to say hi. For this next illustration, I didn't want to leave an animal out because everyone can actually sit with us. But in the previous clip, and I don't know if you saw, but in the midst of penguin lights, there's actually a polar bear and I wanted to incorporate the polar bear somehow. And with this in mind, I thought the polar bear's little tiny tail wag was amusing, so I decided to incorporate that voluptuous characteristic into this drawing to add personality. So when it came to drawing this, I actually had to maintain a different approach. Originally, I wanted to maintain a normal white coat for the polar bear, but soon realized the challenge in doing so when it came to colored pencil. In recognizing this challenge, I wanted to change things up a little bit and add more color into this polar bear, and in doing so, I wanted to outline the drawing with cool tones. With the cool tones that you see here, the shades include light cerulean blue, parma violet, and a green shade known as chartreuse. For the elephant illustration, I wanted to create something a little bit more crazier and abstract. And to do so, and unlike the polar bear, I wanted to incorporate a light foundation by adding up layers of colors while simultaneously shading. With that being said, the first layer that is applied is typically the lightest shade, and in this case, I used light cerulean blue. With the lightest amount of pressure of the pencil when applying the overall foundation of your drawing, it's important to make sure that the first layer remains consistent, and it's also recommended to work in smaller sections. When building layers, I typically like to work my way from the lightest shade to the darkest color while adding increased pressure towards places of contrast or shadowing. And as I mentioned before, it's also important to keep in mind of where you want your light source to come from. In this particular drawing, I did not rely on the black color pencil for the shadows, but instead focused on the darker shades of blue and violet. If you were curious on what shades I used, the darker shades include violet, violet blue, indigo blue, and ultramarine. I would also like to mention that when it comes to the circles or the curvature of the elephant's trunk, I like to direct the color pencil in the direction of that circle. 
Although I am offering insight about shading and drawing with colored pencils, I am in no way perfect as I believe that there is always room for improvement. Even in this particular drawing, I believe that if I took additional time, I could probably even improve on accentuating the highlights and making them much brighter. And not gonna lie, it was also challenging doing the grass as I probably should have worked in smaller sections so I can focus more on the highlights and contrast and shadows of each strand or patches of grass. I think it would also would have been more beneficial if there was also a reference picture to look off of. And not only did we see elephants at the zoo, but we also saw cute little hippopotamuses. To continue the theme that was evident at the beginning of this video, I decided to incorporate that again here where a cat is wearing a hippopotamus costume. After adding a light blue foundation, I used the side of my pencil lead to create an easier angle for shading. As you can see, the cool tones wasn't exactly opaque as I would have liked. To remedy this, I wanted the lighter colors to have a smoother transition and blend with the darker colors. And since I didn't have a colorless blender, I decided to use a white color pencil instead. And I decided to continue the seamless process throughout this entire costume. <laughs> Get it? Seamless? Costume? Okay, I'll stop. I was so happy with how adorable the hippo costume turned out, I decided to give him a best friend but with a rhinoceros costume. Because now, they're a perfect duo. Just like how I did the hippo costume, I used the lightest shade known as Process Red and worked my way towards the darkest shade known as Violet with Mulberry in between. Also, since it was around Christmas time when we went to the zoo, we also got a chance to see Santa's reindeer while they were off duty. But I guess they didn't really mind us since they were busy eating dinner. It's a zebra! Wow! And to make the trip even more memorable, I decided to pet a friend. I touched it! Oh my god, I touched it! <laughs> Is that Crane from Kung Fu Panda? Man down! Man down! Man down! What animal is this? Well, I still don't know what animal that is to this day, so if you know, please comment it down below because I'm clueless. Also, is it rude to ask how old they are? After hanging with the trees with my new friends, I also met this crocodile, which leads me to my most favorite drawing that I've done throughout this video. I don't know why, but as I was drawing this, it just reminded me of Reptar from Rugrats. With that being said, and to build a more childhood-like theme, I wanted to add small childlike details including vibrant colors that you wouldn't normally see on an alligator or a crocodile, and I also wanted to include sewn-on patches to indicate a more homemade costume. Not only do I find this drawing super cute, but I also find green to be one of the more easier shades to blend together with for some odd reason. I feel like the colors might be more versatile to blend with each other, but I'm not sure. Am I making sense anymore? I don't know. I'm gonna throw a cigarette in his mouth. Aww. <laughs> Sad times. Not only did we accidentally walk in on two frogs having a highly intense staring competition, but we also met a real one too, and he was just straight vibing. And since he was just laying around, I decided to do the same for my next drawing. Not only were you able to see cats dressed up as penguins, hippos, rhinos, and alligators, but now we have a feline dressed up as a friendly froggo. Not only did I have a lot of fun drawing these cute animals, but I also had a lot of fun seeing the zoo lights. Hopefully you were able to find this video somewhat informative or entertaining and I appreciate you for staying this long into the video. And with that being said, I hope everyone stays safe and stay tuned for bloopers. Oh, that's cool.
Yeah, but what's the second one doing? Now, what do you get if you cross a tortoise and a porcupine? A slow poke.